Babylon was a key kingdom in ancient Mesopotamia from the 18th to 6th centuries BC. The city was built on the Euphrates River and divided in equal parts along its left and right banks, with steep embankments to contain the river's seasonal floods. Babylon was originally a small Akkadian town dating from the period of the Akkadian Empire c. 2300 BC. The town became part of a small independent city-state with the rise of the first Babylonian dynasty in the 19th century BC. After the Amorite king Hammurabi created a short-lived empire in the 18th century BC, he built Babylon up into a major city and declared himself its king, and southern Mesopotamia became known as Babylonia and Babylon eclipsed Nippur as its holy city. The empire waned under Hammurabi's son Samsu Aluna and Babylon spent long periods under Assyrian, Kassite and Elamite domination. After being destroyed and then rebuilt by the Assyrians, Babylon became the capital of the short-lived Neo-Babylonian Empire from 609 to 539 BC. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, although a number of scholars believe these were actually in the Assyrian capital of Nineveh. After the fall of the Neo-Babylonian Empire, the city came under the rule of the Achaemenid, Seleucid, Parthian, Roman, and Sassanid empires. It has been estimated that Babylon was the largest city in the world c. 1770 c. 1670 BC, and again c. 612 c. 320 BC. It was perhaps the first city to reach a population above 200,000. Estimates for the maximum extent of its area range from 890 to 900 hectares 2,200 acres. The remains of the city are in present-day Hilla, Babel Governorate, Iraq, about 85 kilometers 53 miles south of Baghdad, comprising a large tell of broken mud-brick buildings and debris. The main sources of information about Babylon Excavation of the site itself, references in cuneiform texts found elsewhere in Mesopotamia, references in the Bible, descriptions in classical writing, especially by Herodotus, and secondhand descriptions citing the work of Tejas and Barassus present an incomplete and sometimes contradictory picture of the ancient city even at its peak in the 6th century BC. Name The English Babylon comes from Greek Babylon, Babylon a transliteration of the Akkadian Babylon cuneiform, Ka2, Dig, Ir, Reiki, Archibald Sace, writing in the 1870s, considered Bab Ilu or Bab Ili to be the translation of an earlier Sumerian formerly thought to be in the obsolete Turanian language family named Ca Demira, meaning Gate of God. Based on the characters Kan4 Digir, Reiki, corresponding to the Sumerian phrase Khan Digirak, God's Gate, or perhaps based on other characters. According to Professor Dietz Otto Edzard, the city was originally called Babila, but by the time of the Third Dynasty of Ur, through a process of etymological speculation, had become Bab Ili, -m, meaning Gate of God, or God's Gate. Bab Il, the Gate of God. Translation is increasingly viewed as a folk etymology to explain an unknown original non-Semitic placename. Linguist I.J. Jelb suggested in 1955 that Babel, Babila is the basis of the city name, of unknown meaning and origin, as there were other similarly named places in Sumer, and there are no other examples of Sumerian place names being replaced with Akkadian translations. He deduced that it later transformed into Akkadian Bab Ili -m, and that the Sumerian Ka Dig Irra was a later translation of that, rather than vice versa. In the Bible, the name appears as Babel Hebrew, Babel Babel, Tib, Babel Babel, Classical Syriac, Bbl Babel, Aramaic, Bbl Babel, in Arabic, Babel Babel, interpreted in the book of Genesis to mean confusion, from the verb bilbel to confuse. The modern English verb to babble. To speak meaningless words is popularly thought to derive from this name, but there is no direct connection. Ancient records in some situations use Babylon as a name for other cities, including cities like Borsippa within Babylon's sphere of influence, and Nineveh for a short period after the Assyrian sack of Babylon. <laughs> Geography The remains of the city are in present-day Hilla, Babel Governorate, Iraq, about 85 kilometers 53 miles south of Baghdad, comprising a large tell of broken mud-brick buildings and debris. 
The site at Babylon consists of a number of mounds covering an area of about 2 by 1 km 1.24 miles times 0.62 miles, oriented north to south, along the Euphrates to the west. Originally, the river roughly bisected the city, but the course of the river has since shifted so that most of the remains of the former western part of the city are now inundated. Some portions of the city wall to the west of the river also remain. Only a small portion of the ancient city 3% of the area within the inner walls, 1.5% of the area within the outer walls, 0.1% at the depth of Middle and Old Babylon has been excavated. Known remains include Kasr, also called Palace or Castle, it is the location of the Neo-Babylonian ziggurat Etemenanki and lies in the center of the site. Amran ibn Ali, the highest of the mounds at 25 meters, to the south. It is the site of Asajala, a temple of Marduk which also contained shrines to Ea and Nabu. Homra, a reddish-colored mound on the west side. Most of the Hellenistic remains are here. Babel, a mound about 22 meters high at the northern end of the site. Its bricks have been subject to looting since ancient times. It held a palace built by Nebuchadnezzar. Archaeologists have recovered few artifacts predating the Neo-Babylonian period. The water table in the region has risen greatly over the centuries, and artifacts from the time before the Neo-Babylonian Empire are unavailable to current standard archaeological methods. Additionally, the Neo-Babylonians conducted significant rebuilding projects in the city, which destroyed or obscured much of the earlier record. Babylon was pillaged numerous times after revolting against foreign rule, most notably by the Hittites and Elamites in the second millennium, then by the Neo-Assyrian Empire and the Achaemenid Empire in the first millennium. Much of the western half of the city is now beneath the river, and other parts of the site have been mined for commercial building materials. Only the Koldui expedition recovered artifacts from the old Babylonian period. These included 967 clay tablets, stored in private houses, with Sumerian literature and lexical documents. Nearby ancient settlements are Kish, Borsippa, Dilbat, and Kutha. Marad and Sippar were 60 kilometers in either direction along the Euphrates. <laughs> Sources Historical knowledge of early Babylon must be pieced together from epigraphic remains found elsewhere, such as at Uruk, Nippur, and Haradim. Information on the Neo-Babylonian city is available from archaeological excavations and from classical sources. Babylon was described, perhaps even visited, by a number of classical historians including Tejas, Herodotus, Quintus Curtius Rufus, Strabo, and Cletarchus. These reports are of variable accuracy and some of the content was politically motivated, but these still provide useful information. Early references References to the city of Babylon can be found in Akkadian and Sumerian literature from the late 3rd millennium BC. One of the earliest is a tablet describing the Akkadian king Sar Kali Sari laying the foundations in Babylon of new temples for Anun Tum and Alaba. Babylon also appears in the administrative records of the Third Dynasty of Ur, which collected in kind tax payments and appointed an Ensi as local governor. The so called Widener Chronicle, also known as ABC 19, states that Sargon of Akkad c. 23d century BC in the short chronology had built Babylon in front of Akkad. ABC 1951. A later chronicle states that Sargon dug up the dirt of the pit of Babylon, and made a counterpart of Babylon next to Akkad. ABC 2018-19. Van de Meerup has suggested that those sources may refer to the much later Assyrian king Sargon II of the Neo-Assyrian Empire rather than Sargon of Akkad. Classical dating. Tejas, quoted by Diodorus Siculus and in George Syncellus's Chronographia, claimed to have access to manuscripts from Babylonian archives, which date the founding of Babylon to 2286 BC, under the reign of its first king, Belus. A similar figure is found in the writings of Barassus, who according to Pliny, stated that astronomical observations commenced at Babylon 490 years before the Greek era of Foronius, indicating 2243 BC. 
Stephanus of Byzantium wrote that Babylon was built 1,002 years before the date given by Hellenicus of Lesbos for the siege of Troy 1229 BC, which would date Babylon's foundation to 2231 BC. All of these dates place Babylon's foundation in the 23rd century BC, however, cuneiform records have not been found to correspond with these classical accounts. History By around the 19th century BC, much of southern Mesopotamia was occupied by Amorites, nomadic tribes from the northern Levant who were northwest Semitic speakers, unlike the native Akkadians of southern Mesopotamia and Assyria, who spoke East Semitic. The Amorites at first did not practice agriculture like more advanced Mesopotamians, preferring a semi-nomadic lifestyle, herding sheep. Over time, Amorite grain merchants rose to prominence and established their own independent dynasties in several South Mesopotamian city-states, most notably Isin, Larsa, Eshnuna, Lagash, and later, founding Babylon as a state. <inaudible> <inaudible> Old Babylonian period According to a Babylonian date list, Amorite rule in Babylon began c. 19th or 18th century BC with a chieftain named Sumu Abum, who declared independence from the neighboring city-state of Kazalu. Sumu Lael, whose dates may be concurrent with those of Sumu Abum, is usually given as the progenitor of the first Babylonian dynasty. Both are credited with building the walls of Babylon. In any case, the records describe Sumu Lael's military successes establishing a regional sphere of influence for Babylon. Babylon was initially a minor city state, and controlled little surrounding territory. Its first four Amorite rulers did not assume the title of king. The older and more powerful states of Assyria, Elam, Isin, and Larsa overshadowed Babylon until it became the capital of Hammurabi's short lived empire about a century later. Hammurabi R, 1792 BC is famous for codifying the laws of Babylonia into the Code of Hammurabi. He conquered all of the cities and city-states of southern Mesopotamia, including Isin, Larsa, Ur, Uruk, Nippur, Lagash, Eridu, Kish, Adab, Eshnuna, Akshak, Akkad, Shurupak, Bad Tibira, Sippar, and Gursu, coalescing them into one kingdom, ruled from Babylon. Hammurabi also invaded and conquered Elam to the east, and the kingdoms of Mari and Ebla to the northwest. After a protracted struggle with the powerful Assyrian king Ishmi Dagon of the old Assyrian Empire, he forced his successor to pay tribute late in his reign, spreading Babylonian power to Assyria's Hattian and Hurrian colonies in Asia Minor. After the reign of Hammurabi, the whole of southern Mesopotamia came to be known as Babylonia, whereas the north had already coalesced centuries before into Assyria. From this time, Babylon supplanted Nippur and Eridu as the major religious centers of southern Mesopotamia. Hammurabi's empire destabilized after his death. Assyrians defeated and drove out the Babylonians and Amorites. The far south of Mesopotamia broke away, forming the native Selan dynasty, and the Elamites appropriated territory in eastern Mesopotamia. The Amorite dynasty remained in power in Babylon, which again became a small city-state. Texts from Old Babylon often include references to Shamash, the sun god of Sippar, treated as a supreme deity, and Marduk, considered as his son. Marduk was later elevated to a higher status and Shamash lowered, perhaps reflecting Babylon's rising political power. <laughs> Middle Babylon In 1595 BC the city was overthrown by the Hittite Empire from Asia Minor. Thereafter, Kassites from the Zagros Mountains of northwestern ancient Iran captured Babylon, ushering in a dynasty that lasted for 435 years, until 1160 BC. The city was renamed Karandanyesh during this period. Kassite Babylon eventually became subject to the Middle Assyrian Empire 1365 BC to the north, and Elam to the east, with both powers vying for control of the city. The Assyrian king Tukulti Ninurta I took the throne of Babylon in 1235 BC. By 1155 BC, after continued attacks and annexing of territory by the Assyrians and Elamites, the Kassites were deposed in Babylon. An Akkadian South Mesopotamian dynasty then ruled for the first time. However, Babylon remained weak and subject to domination by Assyria. 
Its ineffectual native kings were unable to prevent new waves of foreign West Semitic settlers from the deserts of the Levant, including the Arameans and Soutians in the 11th century BC, and finally the Chaldeans in the 9th century BC, entering and appropriating areas of Babylonia for themselves. The Arameans briefly ruled in Babylon during the late 11th century BC. Assyrian period During the rule of the Neo-Assyrian Empire 911 to 609 BC, Babylonia was under constant Assyrian domination or direct control. During the reign of Sennacherib of Assyria, Babylonia was in a constant state of revolt, led by a chieftain named Merodach Baladan, in alliance with the Elamites, and suppressed only by the complete destruction of the city of Babylon. In 689 BC, its walls, temples and palaces were razed, and the rubble was thrown into the Araktu, the sea bordering the earlier Babylon on the south. Destruction of the religious center shocked many, and the subsequent murder of Sennacherib by two of his own sons while praying to the god Nisrich was considered an act of atonement. Consequently, his successor Esarhaddon hastened to rebuild the old city and make it his residence during part of the year. After his death, Babylonia was governed by his elder son, the Assyrian prince Shamash Shum Ukin, who eventually started a civil war in 652 BC against his own brother, Ashurbanipal, who ruled in Nineveh. Shamash Shum Ukin enlisted the help of other peoples subject to Assyria, including Elam, Persia, Chaldeans, and Sudians of southern Mesopotamia, and the Canaanites and Arabs dwelling in the deserts south of Mesopotamia. Once again, Babylon was besieged by the Assyrians, starved into surrender and its allies were defeated. Ashurbanipal celebrated a service of reconciliation, but did not venture to take the hands of Bel. An Assyrian governor named Kandalanu was appointed as ruler of the city. Ashurbanipal did collect texts from Babylon for inclusion in his extensive library at Nineveh. After the death of Ashurbanipal, the Assyrian Empire destabilized due to a series of internal civil wars throughout the reigns of Assyrian kings Ashur Edel Alani, Sin Shumu Lishur, and Sincherishkin. Eventually, Babylon, like many other parts of the Near East, took advantage of the anarchy within Assyria to free itself from Assyrian rule. In the subsequent overthrow of the Assyrian Empire by an alliance of peoples, the Babylonians saw another example of divine vengeance. <laughs> Neo-Babylonian Empire Under Nabopolassar, a previously unknown Chaldean chieftain, Babylon escaped Assyrian rule, and in an alliance with Syaxers, king of the Medes and Persians together with the Scythians and Cimmerians, finally destroyed the Assyrian Empire between 612 BC and 605 BC. Babylon thus became the capital of the Neo-Babylonian sometimes and possibly erroneously called the Chaldean Empire. With the recovery of Babylonian independence, a new era of architectural activity ensued, particularly during the reign of his son Nebuchadnezzar II, 604 to 561 BC. Nebuchadnezzar ordered the complete reconstruction of the imperial grounds, including the Etemenanki ziggurat and the construction of the Ishtar Gate, the most prominent of eight gates around Babylon. A reconstruction of the Ishtar Gate is located in the Pergamon Museum in Berlin. Nebuchadnezzar is also credited with the construction of the Hanging Gardens of Babylon—one of the seven wonders of the ancient world—said to have been built for his homesick wife Amiitis. Whether the gardens actually existed is a matter of dispute. German archaeologist Robert Koldewey speculated that he had discovered its foundations, but many historians disagree about the location. Stephanie Daly has argued that the Hanging Gardens were actually located in the Assyrian capital, Nineveh. Nebuchadnezzar is also notoriously associated with the Babylonian exile of the Jews, the result of an imperial technique of pacification, used also by the Assyrians, in which ethnic groups in conquered areas were deported en masse to the capital. <laughs> Persian conquest In 539 BC, the Neo-Babylonian Empire fell to Cyrus the Great, king of Persia, with a military engagement known as the Battle of Opus. Babylon's walls were considered impenetrable. The only way into the city was through one of its many gates or through the Euphrates River. Metal grates were installed underwater, allowing the river to flow through the city walls while preventing intrusion. 
The Persians devised a plan to enter the city via the river. During a Babylonian national feast, Cyrus' troops diverted the Euphrates River upstream, allowing Cyrus' soldiers to enter the city through the lowered water. The Persian army conquered the outlying areas of the city while the majority of Babylonians at the city center were unaware of the breach. The account was elaborated upon by Herodotus and is also mentioned in parts of the Hebrew Bible. Herodotus also described a moat, an enormously tall and broad wall cemented with bitumen and with buildings on top, and a hundred gates to the city. He also writes that the Babylonians wear turbans and perfume and bury their dead in honey, that they practice ritual prostitution, and that three tribes among them eat nothing but fish. The Hundred Gates can be considered a reference to Homer, and following the pronouncement of Archibald Henry Sace in 1883, Herodotus's account of Babylon has largely been considered to represent Greek folklore rather than an authentic voyage to Babylon. However, recently, Daly and others have suggested taking Herodotus's account seriously. According to 2 Chronicles chapter 36 of the Hebrew Bible, Cyrus later issued a decree permitting captive people, including the Jews, to return to their own lands. Text found on the Cyrus Cylinder has traditionally been seen by biblical scholars as corroborative evidence of this policy, although the interpretation is disputed because the text only identifies Mesopotamian sanctuaries but makes no mention of Jews, Jerusalem, or Judea. Under Cyrus and the subsequent Persian king Darius I, Babylon became the capital city of the Ninth Satrapy Babylonia in the south and Athura in the north, as well as a center of learning and scientific advancement. In Achaemenid Persia, the ancient Babylonian arts of astronomy and mathematics were revitalized, and Babylonian scholars completed maps of constellations. The city became the administrative capital of the Persian Empire and remained prominent for over two centuries. Many important archaeological discoveries have been made that can provide a better understanding of that era. The early Persian kings had attempted to maintain the religious ceremonies of Marduk, but by the reign of Darius III, overtaxation and the strain of numerous wars led to a deterioration of Babylon's main shrines and canals, and the destabilization of the surrounding region. There were numerous attempts at rebellion and in 522 BC Nebuchadnezzar III, 521 BC Nebuchadnezzar IV and 482 BC Bel Shemani and Shamash Arabah native Babylonian kings briefly regained independence. However these revolts were quickly repressed and Babylon remained under Persian rule for two centuries, until Alexander the Great's entry in 331 BC. Hellenistic period In October of 331 BC, Darius III, the last Achaemenid king of the Persian Empire, was defeated by the forces of the ancient Macedonian Greek ruler Alexander the Great at the Battle of Gagamela. A native account of this invasion notes a ruling by Alexander not to enter the homes of its inhabitants. Under Alexander, Babylon again flourished as a center of learning and commerce. However, following Alexander's death in 323 BC in the palace of Nebuchadnezzar, his empire was divided amongst his generals, the Diadochi, and decades of fighting soon began. The constant turmoil virtually emptied the city of Babylon. A tablet dated 275 BC states that the inhabitants of Babylon were transported to Seleucia, where a palace and a temple were built. With this deportation, Babylon became insignificant as a city, although more than a century later, sacrifices were still performed in its old sanctuary. <inaudible> <inaudible> Renewed Persian rule Under the Parthian and Sassanid empires, Babylon like Assyria became a province of these Persian empires for nine centuries, until after AD 650. It maintained its own culture and people, who spoke varieties of Aramaic, and who continued to refer to their homeland as Babylon. Examples of their culture are found in the Babylonian Talmud, the Gnostic Mandaean religion, Eastern Rite Christianity and the religion of the prophet Mani. Christianity was introduced to Mesopotamia in the 1st and 2nd centuries AD, and Babylon was the seat of a bishop of the Church of the East until well after the Arab, Islamic conquest. Muslim conquest In the mid-7th century, Mesopotamia was invaded and settled by the expanding Muslim empire, and a period of Islamization followed. 
Babylon was dissolved as a province and Aramaic and Church of the East Christianity eventually became marginalized. Ibn Haqqal mentions a small village called Babel in the 10th century. Subsequent travelers describe only ruins. Babylon is mentioned in medieval Arabic writings as a source of bricks, said to have been used in cities from Baghdad to Basra. European travelers in many cases could not discover the city's location, or mistook Fallujah for it. 12th century traveler Benjamin of Tadella mentions Babylon, but it is not clear if he really went there. Others referred to Baghdad as Babylon or New Babylon and described various structures encountered in the region as the Tower of Babel. Pietro della Valle found the ancient site in the 17th century and noted the existence of both baked and dried mudbricks cemented with bitumen. <laughs> Modern era The 18th century saw an increasing flow of travelers to Babylon, including Karsten Niebuhr and Pierre Joseph de Beauchamp, as well as measurements of its latitude. Beauchamp's memoir, published in English translation in 1792, provoked the British East India Company to direct its agents in Baghdad and Basra to acquire Mesopotamian relics for shipment to London. Topic: <laughs> Excavation and research. Claudius Rich, working for the East India Company in Baghdad, excavated Babylon in 1811–12 and again in 1817. Robert Mignon excavated at the site briefly in 1827. William Loftus visited there in 1849. Austin Henry Layard made some soundings during a brief visit in 1850 before abandoning the site. Fulgence Fresnel and Julius Oppert heavily excavated Babylon from 1852 to 1854. However, many of the fruits of their work were lost when a raft containing over 40 crates of artifacts sank into the Tigris River. Sir Henry Rawlinson, 1st Baronet and George Smith worked there briefly in 1854. The next excavation was conducted by Hormuzd Rassam on behalf of the British Museum. Work began in 1879, continuing until 1882, and was prompted by widespread looting of the site. Using industrial scale digging in search of artifacts, Rassam recovered a large quantity of cuneiform tablets and other finds. The zealous excavation methods, common at the time, caused significant damage to the archaeological context. Many tablets had appeared on the market in 1876 before Rassam's excavation began. A team from the German Oriental Society led by Robert Koldewey conducted the first scientific archaeological excavations at Babylon. The work was conducted daily from 1899 until 1917. Primary efforts of the dig involved the Temple of Marduk and the processional way leading up to it, as well as the city wall. Artifacts including pieces of the Ishtar Gate and hundreds of recovered tablets were sent back to Germany, where Koldewey's colleague Walter André reconstructed them into displays at Vorderasiatisches Museum Berlin. The German archaeologists fled before oncoming British troops in 1917 and again many objects went missing in the following years. Further work by the German Archaeological Institute was conducted by Heinrich J. Lenzen in 1956 and Hans-Georg Schmidt in 1962. Lenzen's work dealt primarily with the Hellenistic theater, and Schmid focused on the temple ziggurat Etemenanki. The site was excavated in 1974 on behalf of the Turin Center for Archaeological Research and Excavations in the Middle East and Asia and the Iraqi Italian Institute of Archaeological Sciences. The focus was on clearing up issues raised by re examination of the old German data. Additional work in 1987–1989 concentrated on the area surrounding the Ashara and Ninurta temples in the Shu Anna city quarter of Babylon. During the restoration efforts in Babylon, the Iraqi State Organization for Antiquities and Heritage conducted extensive research, excavation and clearing, but wider publication of these archaeological activities has been limited. Indeed, most of the known tablets from all modern excavation remain unpublished. Iraq government The site of Babylon has been a cultural asset to Iraq since the creation of the modern Iraqi government in 1920. Babylonian images periodically appear on Iraqi postcards and stamps. In the 1960s, a replica of the Ishtar Gate and a reconstruction of Ninmak Temple were built on site. On 14 February 1978, the Baathist government of Iraq under Saddam Hussein began the 
Archaeological Restoration of Babylon Project, reconstructing features of the ancient city atop its ruins. These features included the southern palace of Nebuchadnezzar, with 250 rooms, five courtyards, and a 30 meter entrance arch. The project also reinforced the processional way, the Lion of Babylon, and an amphitheatre constructed in the city's Hellenistic era. In 1982 the government minted a set of seven coins displaying iconic features of Babylon. A Babylon International Festival was held in September 1987, and annually thereafter until 2002 excepting 1990 and 1991, to showcase this work. Proposed reconstruction of the Hanging Gardens and the Great Ziggurat never took place. Hussein installed a portrait of himself and Nebuchadnezzar at the entrance to the ruins and inscribed his name on many of the bricks, in imitation of Nebuchadnezzar. One frequent inscription reads, This was built by Saddam Hussein, son of Nebuchadnezzar, to glorify Iraq. These bricks became sought after as collectors' items after Hussein's downfall. Similar projects were conducted at Nineveh, Nimrud, Asser, and Hatra to demonstrate the magnificence of Arab achievement. When the 1991 Gulf War ended, Hussein wanted to build a modern palace called Saddam Hill over some of the old ruins, in the pyramidal style of a ziggurat. In 2003, he intended the construction of a cable car line over Babylon, but plans were halted by the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Topic. U.S. and Polish occupation Following the 2003 invasion of Iraq, the area around Babylon came under the control of U.S. troops, before being handed over to Polish forces in September 2003. U.S. forces under the command of General James T. Conway of the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force were criticized for building the military base, Camp Alpha with a helipad and other facilities on ancient Babylonian ruins during the Iraq War. U.S. forces have occupied the site for some time and have caused irreparable damage to the archaeological record. In a report of the British Museum's Near East Department, Dr. John Curtis described how parts of the archaeological site were leveled to create a landing area for helicopters, and parking lots for heavy vehicles. Curtis wrote of the occupation forces, they caused substantial damage to the Ishtar Gate, one of the most famous monuments from antiquity. U.S. military vehicles crushed 2,600-year-old brick pavements, archaeological fragments were scattered across the site, more than 12 trenches were driven into ancient deposits and military earth-moving projects contaminated the site for future generations of scientists. A U.S. military spokesman claimed that engineering operations were discussed with the head of the Babylon Museum. The head of the Iraqi State Board for Heritage and Antiquities, Donnie George, said that the mess will take decades to sort out, and criticized Polish troops for causing terrible damage to the site. Poland resolved in 2004 to place the city under Iraq control, and commissioned a report titled Report Concerning the Condition of the Preservation of the Babylon Archaeological Site, which it presented at a meeting on 11-13 December 2004. In 2005, the site was handed over to the Iraqi Ministry of Culture. In April 2006, Colonel John Coleman, former Chief of Staff for the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force, offered to issue an apology for the damage done by military personnel under his command. However, he also claimed that the U.S. presence had deterred far greater damage by other looters. An article published in April 2006 stated that UN officials and Iraqi leaders have plans to restore Babylon, making it into a cultural center, two museums and a library, containing replicas of artifacts and local maps and reports, were raided and destroyed. Present day In May 2009, the provincial government of Babel reopened the site to tourists, but not many have come. An oil pipeline runs through an outer wall of the city. Topic: <laughs> Cultural importance. Before modern archaeological excavations in Mesopotamia, the appearance of Babylon was largely a mystery, and typically envisioned by Western artists as a hybrid between ancient Egyptian, classical Greek, and contemporary Ottoman culture. Due to Babylon's historical significance as well as references to it in the Bible, the word, Babylon, in various languages has acquired a generic meaning of a large, bustling diverse city. 
Examples include Babylon is used in reggae music as a concept in the Rastafari belief system, denoting the materialistic capitalist world. Freemasonry, which has its own versions of biblical legends, classically considered Babylon as its birthplace and a haven for science and knowledge. Babylon 5 a science fiction series about a multi-racial futuristic space station. Babylon AD takes place in New York City, decades in the future. Babylon is Lithuanian name for Babylon, a real estate development in Lithuania. Topic: <inaudible> Biblical narrative. In Genesis chapter 10 verse 10, Babel, Babylon is described as founded by Nimrod along with Uruk, Akkad and perhaps Kalna. All of them in Shinar. Kalna is now sometimes translated not as a proper name but as the phrase all of them. Another story is given in Genesis chapter 11, which describes a united human race, speaking one language, migrating to Shinar to establish a city and tower, the Tower of Babel. God halts construction of the tower by scattering humanity across the earth and confusing their communication so they are unable to understand each other in the same language. Babylon appears throughout the Hebrew Bible, including several prophecies and in descriptions of the destruction of Jerusalem and subsequent Babylonian captivity. Consequently, in Jewish tradition, Babylon symbolizes an oppressor against which righteous believers must struggle. In Christianity, Babylon symbolizes worldliness and evil. Prophecies sometimes symbolically link the kings of Babylon with Lucifer. Nebuchadnezzar, sometimes conflated with Nabonidus, appears as the foremost ruler in this narrative. The Book of Revelation in the Christian Bible refers to Babylon many centuries after it ceased to be a major political center. The city is personified by the Whore of Babylon, riding on a scarlet beast with seven heads and ten horns, and drunk on the blood of the righteous. Some scholars of apocalyptic literature believe this New Testament, Babylon, to be a dysphemism for the Roman Empire. See also Cities of the Ancient Near East, Jehoiakim's Rations Tablets List of Kings of Babylon Tomb of Daniel Notes <laughs>